Whoa. Security cam footage. Mimi. Good morning. Bags isn't feeling well. Long night. Poor kitty. What are you watching? Security tape from last night. Daryl left the lights on again. Should we slash his tires? I'll leave a stern note on his desk. Spare the rod. Hmm. What are we doing today? Right. This is weird. You know that old vending machine? The one that only has tomato juice? No, no, the old one they just stopped refilling. Remember we rolled it out onto the dock last August and some scavengers stripped it for metal in the middle of the night? Daryl cut his hand cleaning up after them and it got infected? Remember? No. Okay. Anyway, the rest of it ended up in the coat room until finally Daryl was piling it into a big bag for the trash barge to pick up and he came across this box lost behind all the junk. Check it out. This looks old. Yeah. It's a bunch of videotapes and completed questionnaires. I looked up the reference number and it's never been processed. So I guess that's what we're doing today. There's no date on it. We'll just have to make one up. Unless there's some footage of a calendar or something in here. Flipping through questionnaire. Uh, I guess these are the old tests before we started doing the video exit interviews. That's annoying. Yeah. Let's see. How did we do this? Uh, I'll run the tape, you interpret the questionnaire, and I'll type it up. That's Shannon, right? Oh yeah, definitely Shannon. So this is the tape that was in the old box. So this is... We're looking at this far in the future now? So I guess I can, like, fill out the questionnaire there. Let's take a look around, though. So what is this place? The Red Fansky Center or something like that? They do research of some sort? Questionnaires? Oh, are we filling out the questionnaire to make, like, quick cash? Is, is that what we're doing? Wow. Oh, and this is from Jen, not, not uh, Shannon or anything. I guess this is going to be kind of like the museum a little bit. We're watching something happen through someone else's eyes. Wow, I haven't seen that poster in a while. I think that was mine from college. Yeah, definitely. Oh, right. Daryl swapped it out in the redesign. Now it's... Oh, it's there now. Yeah, it's... That's weird. I can't picture it. I mean, I can picture the wall, and there's definitely something hung there. That's gonna bug me. Want me to go look? <laughs> it's just down the hall. No, it's okay. The modernist bookshelf with a fancy vintage turntable. So ostentatious. So Daryl. What? That was my bookshelf. Oh no. <laughs> but you, like, grew out of it or something, right? It ended up in the lab somehow. I keep my books in a pile now. It's easier to find what I'm looking for. Never what shelf is that book on. Only, well, it's somewhere in the pile. Pragmatic. There should be some basic information, and the first control test. Subject's general disposition. Jen looks over the questionnaire document from the envelope. 
Question, why are you here? Response, it's a scheduled ferry stop, not my final destination. Oh, I'm right, I'm choosing. Uh, the other passenger said we can make some quick cash taking these tests. Pragmatic. Demographic category. Question, what's the first thing you remember? I remember a birdcage. Mid-twenties? Hmm. Do you think we should use the old categories or the new categories? Oh, right. Will a computer even still take the old ones? They're still in the menu. Okay. In that case, put it in, uh, put in precarious. Sure. Oh, I forgot. Name? It says Marquez on the file. Whoa. Marquez? Are you sure? That's what it says. Do you know her? That can't be. No, that's not her. Did she come alone or with a group? I don't know. There's an extended monitoring tape here, too. We could check on the dock when she showed up. Hmm. No, definitely not. Oh, she's traveling with one of those creepy distillery guys. Now, how do they know that, like, so they're already reading Conway as a creepy distillery guy. Is that because of the limbs turning into that crystalline look? So, like, can people see that then? Are people able to see that the limbs have changed? Him? Nah, he just looks like some old drifter. Eh, maybe you're right. It's hard to tell in this light. Oh, it's... Wait, who is that? That guy in the hoodie. What? I've never seen him before. Really? He looks so damn familiar. I thought maybe he was a former intern or something. He's a little old for that, right? Nah, I don't recognize him. Sorry. You're all deja vu this morning. It's spooky. Sorry. Just one of those days, I guess. So what Marquez were they thinking of? Were they thinking of Weaver? <laughs> Guess the old man is on dinghy guard duty. A noble assignment. So, who was this lady? Oh, right. Well, do you remember WEVP TV? No. Okay. It was a community television station. The Consolidated Power Company had to fund it as, like, a punishment for owning too much of the broadcast spectrum or something. Oh, they used to screen your videos, right? Yeah, it was like a co-op. I did some maintenance, and they gave me a slot to show my work. And they had that naked banjo guy late at night. Yeah, that's mainly what everyone remembers. I guess their whole mandate was community expression. He was certainly expressive. Oh, wait. Was WEVP the one that... The Flood, right? Yeah. The Flood? Damn. What? So, Shannon Marquez. Did she have a naked banjo show too? What? No. Let me guess. Question. Which of the following sentences best describes you? Hmm. I grieve for fading memories. She did the weather. 
No, I've never heard of Shannon Marquez. It was a Weaver Marquez I knew. She worked at the station for a bit, and then... Uh, she left on kind of weird terms, actually. Anyway, where were we? Yeah, so it was Weaver. The Flood. Something about the TV station and the Flood. What Flood? Okay, how do we rank her from a control test? Question. Without turning around to look, please describe the following objects. Bookshelf. Oh, Christ. Uh... I didn't pay attention. Four shelves, maybe? Shaped... Uh... Nondescript. Reminds me of a... Library. Poster. I didn't pay attention at all. <laughs> I wasn't looking at specifically what the things look like. Um, I think there were circles, maybe? Mm. I have a poster in my workshop, a vintage advertisement for vacuum tubes. Lighting. Just kind of dim. Um, average, I guess. Average, okay. There was a light back there. <laughs> Damn. Okay, well now that I know what sort of tests we're doing, I should probably pay attention. Pear, apple. How many pictures did she remember? Two. Or, actually, maybe three. What? She wrote down orange, strawberry, guava. Guava? I think she meant the pear. See, that's why I hate this test. There's so much fruit that basically looks just like other fruit. Oh, guava. Does a guava even look like a pear, though? I don't think I've ever seen a guava. I thought they were pink. They're just pink on the inside. You wouldn't confuse a real guava for a real pear, but in one of Daryl's crude watercolors. But I can still clearly tell that's a pear, even on video. Yeah, you and I can, but we already know it's a pear. She could be remembering wrong or just identifying what, to her, is a much more likely fruit to appear in a painting based on any number of cultural, social, geographic, uh, you know. She didn't say anything in her response to help clarify. Let's see. Please describe in detail any sensations that accompany your memory of the pictures. I remember the way the fruit tastes. Guava is just like candy. It's almost unnatural. Eh, not really, just some sensory memories of guava. I guess we should just skip the pictures. That's a shame. It's really hard to measure memory degradation in some of the later tests without this one as a baseline location updating scenario. I've been saying we should just use photographs. Watercolor paintings already have the quality of a half-remembered dream anyway. Like they're inviting you to forget them, or somebody else already forgot them for you. Like a mom bird feeding her chicks cotton candy. Photographs are... It's not that they're really more accurate or true, but we think they are. They put you in that mindset. They have authority. So, yeah. Out with the watercolors, I say. But then poor Daryl would have nowhere to exhibit his work. Jen makes a noise. <laughs> Get 
kitty cat. <laughs> Jen, look who it is. Aw, I missed that kitty. Forget what became of the white one. Her name was Coconut, and she disappeared without a trace. Easy come, easy go. I wouldn't say easy. I had to leave food on the dock for a week before she'd come inside. She only stuck around for a month or two. You probably saw quite a lot of her. I remember you were working nights then. She was a nocturnal creature. That's right, I remember. Is this some cat food here? Is this part of the test, feeding the cat? <laughs> Hey there. Wait. I don't remember this test. Oh. Did we cut this one? What's the questionnaire like? No, this is just... Sometimes, if I can't make it in for a few days, I might leave a note to feed the cats. For the test subjects... Wow. How do you know they'll do it? I write it on, um, university letterhead. Chen, that is unethical. At least I don't use university property and research equipment to make weird video art. Very well then, I contradict myself. I wonder which is the nobler transgression. I'll settle that question. It's nobler to feed kitties. Trying to listen for details. It sounds like something like a something with a zipper in a washer or a dryer. And I heard a creaking door. That's all I hear. Oh, okay. This is before the CD players. I hope she remembers to rewind. Or remembered to rewind. <laughs> they never did. And Daryl would be an all night rolling all these tapes back one by one in his little Walkman. He still has that thing. He says he uses it at the gym, but I think he's just too attached to his old mixtapes. He's so sentimental, our Daryl. These tapes had sounds from my apartment building. Did you know that? Oh? I thought it was stock sound effects from the library. Yeah, the CDs are, but when it was on tape, Daryl had me borrow a tape recorder from the music department and go collect them myself. He showed me a first draft of the questionnaire. I think some of them are still in there, like... Question. What were you thinking about immediately before listening to the tape? I was thinking about my cousin. After the tape ended, how quickly did your thoughts return to that subject? I never really stopped thinking about it. Right, I don't really get the point of that question. I think it's just there to set a baseline for the introspection index. 
So all the doors opening and closing. Those are all from your apartment? Most of them, yeah. Others were from the basement. We have these rows of storage closets down there. None of them are locked or anything, it's just like this weird row of doors. They're not even marked or differentiated. You have to keep count as you go and remember which one is yours. Mine is number eight. I went down there a little tipsy once. Sunday cleaning, you know. A few glasses of wine. Anyway, I accidentally opened number nine. And it was full of mice. Like, for a computer, I mean. They were all neatly arranged on shelves, organized by some inscrutable quality. Cables tied with Velcro. The Neighborhood Mouse Hoarder. A collector, I think. I guess he lived next door. I told Daryl we should add a question, something like... Question? While listening to the tape recordings of doors opening, if at any point you have any expectation or visualization about what might be on the other side of one of these doors, please write it down. Hmm. Well, that sound that sounds like laundry going makes me think... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, what is it? Hold, hold on, hold on. Door number nine. Door number nine? That's an eerie response. Because they just talked about how one time they opened door number nine instead of theirs, which was door number eight. In the basement. What the hell? Okay, let's go with this, see what happens. Door number nine. I thought it might be a closet. I was just curious, I guess, since it was from my building, like, I have a strong sense of where these doors lead just by hearing them. But is that just from my memory, or is it inherent in the sound somewhere? Interesting. You should write a grant proposal. Oh, I wouldn't want to step on any toes. You know, university politics. Oh, here's another extended monitoring tape from the waiting room. Maybe I misread that, because if they actually read, like, if that was Shannon that I selected that option for, wouldn't they have freaked out when they read it? So I think I misinterpreted that. Oh, I see what that is now. That was... That was right after they mentioned, one of them mentioned Mimi or, or Jen, I don't remember which one, mentioned that they should add a question, like, and then it said question. I interpreted that as like, okay, they're saving that thought, we're going back to the questionnaire, and then they're going to mention what question they think should be added, like, after that, but no, that was the question they think should be added. Okay, that makes sense now. Busy night. <laughs> Just Will sleeping in the lobby. There he is again, sleeping. Where do I know him from? It's going to drive me up the wall. Does he work at the university? I just saw a light pop up up here, I think. On the top left of the screen. Ah, huh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I think he might have worked there a long time ago. Maybe when I was an undergrad. Ah, the Paleolithic. I thought he looked a bit rugged. That's right, Jen. I went to college during the Stone Age. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Will used to work at the university and then left their shoes there in protest, right? What was your major? Fire. I don't think he was a professor. Maybe staff? It's been so long. Sometimes I wish I'd just barreled through like you did, instead of taking time off before grad school. Hmm. I'm sure it was the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. Or the only thing. I was such a mess. Did I ever tell you about that? My boyfriend died suddenly, in my last year of college. Oh, poor thing. It's okay. It was a long time ago. But yeah, it really shook me up back then. He was studying astronomy. We were both really into experimental music. 
We took a few art classes together. Oh, this light just went out. That's so sad. How did... Uh, sorry, never mind. No, it's okay. That's the thing. Actually, I mean, that's what shook me up about it. It was just this random accident that never should have happened. And so sudden you never could have seen it coming. He was back home visiting his parents. And he fell off a roof. Um... You don't say. Huh. Fell off a roof. Like someone else we know called, what was their name, Calum or something like that? Who was the son of Lysette and Ira? The accident? Slipping on a tile? Huh. I wasn't expecting that. Damn. I know what you mean. I can't predict that kind of... Uh, what do you call it? Freak accident kind of thing. My psychiatrist says that's why I'm such a pessimist. Well, I think you're remarkably upbeat, all things considered. I mean, you know, that thing with your boyfriend on the roof, but also what happened to the TV station. Is this going back to talking about the flood and the TV station thing? Acts of God. You think? No, I mean, that's what you call it. That's what you say when it's nobody's fault. I don't think I believe in that. What? Acts of God. Yeah. But there has to be a word for when something completely shitty happens for no reason, right? I guess it's kind of archaic. Hmm. Jen flips through the question there. Question. First, please use the blank space below to describe your general feeling feelings about television. If you have difficulty summarizing your emotions succinctly or have too many different feelings to fit in the blank space, you may also use the back of this paper. Feelings about television. Well, Shannon should have pretty strong feelings. Television is my preferred window to the world. You were asked to watch several videos. How many of the videos did you watch? All of them. Now, back to Jen. Speaking of the TV station, you were saying something earlier about that other Marquez girl. Oh, right. I was talking about Weaver. Yeah, what exactly happened with her? You said she left on weird terms? Yes, well... So, actually, she just stopped showing up. That was pretty normal. It was all volunteers, right? Community television? Yeah, people didn't really give much advance notice, they just got bored and drifted away. It was more like an art project than a job for most people. Weaver Marquez helped manage the archives, like filing and sorting old tapes of broadcasts. I think she was pretty smart. She probably could have been more help fixing equipment or something, but she seemed content just to organize tapes. Nobody ever talked to her much, so when she left, no big deal. But then, a couple months later, we started getting these bizarre... interventions. <laughs> this is so creepy. Seriously, this whole segment here is like, half horror. There's something about it that's very creepy. I'm guessing Weaver started appearing on their TV like they did at Shannon's place. Question. The camera focused on a table, passed through a doorway, then focused on another table. Which object present on the first table was also present on the second?
The picture was too blurry to make anything out. You should have these VCRs professionally cleaned. I'm running my number on the back of the page. <laughs> Someone would be doing a show in their normal time slot, and then suddenly the feed would cut. We'd still be broadcasting, but our signal was totally jammed. Oh, like interference? I mean total blackout. Then this video would come on, clearly shot in our studio at some point, and it was her, Weaver Marquez. She'd be standing in the middle of the studio, facing the camera. You were asked to make note of a fond memory from childhood and associate it with one of the objects on the table on screen. Which object did you choose? The feather. Was this object present on the second on screen table after the camera passed through the doorway? Not the same one, but another one sort of like it. It's a bit fuzzy in my memory, but I do remember the sound. This awful hum. Like, that was how she did it. She made a hum, a hum so sinister it drove our signal into hiding. The video began with footage of the outside of a building, and then entered the building. Was it day or night outside the building? It was night. When the camera exited the building again, was it day or night outside the building? It was day. Then there were these on-screen captions, exactly the same every time. I don't remember what they said. Something creepy. Wow. This is, this is fucking creepy. Now, do you know what I'm thinking now? Now I'm thinking that this, that we're watching right now is going to be interrupted by Weaver at any point. And I'm just expecting that to happen. Oh. Oh, we can watch these on the other side too. Well, let's make sure we do all these. Three of them? Yeah. At the beginning of the video, you were asked to make note of a memory from earlier in the day and associate it with one of the objects on the table on screen. Which of the objects did you choose? The feather. Was this object present on the second on-screen table after the camera passed through the doorway? So testing my memory. Not the same one, but another one sort of like it. We had a title maker at the station, but it was a different font. I guess she recorded it at WEVP and then took it somewhere else to add the captions? I don't know. We all did a lot of speculating about how she made the video. Why she made the video. Yeah, why not just broadcast it normally? It was community television, right? Couldn't be any worse than Naked Banjo Guy. Yeah, exactly. Some people thought it was a protest or something, but I know she didn't have anything against the station. To me, it felt kind of urgent. Like she would have done her broadcast through the proper channels, but something came up. A crisis or something. This is really creepy! I'm like genuinely really unnerved right now. Now I'm just thinking about the flood and Weaver and a crisis and... Oh, Christ. The video began in one room and passed through a doorway into another room. In each room, a piece of music was playing. Was it the same piece of music in both rooms? Well, I can hear it right now. They're definitely not the same. No, they were different. Was well, the music in the first room optimistic or pessimistic? That music right there. Optimistic. Second room, optimistic or pessimistic? 
Mm, pessimistic. How often did it happen? A lot. Dozens of times. It went on for years. We even thought about asking the police to look into it, but it's... It's so hard to locate a pirate signal. I mean, it could come from any direction, you know? It's all just waves. Exactly. Years. Years. Did we ever get trapped in... I don't know, trap, trapped in what? In Xanadu? But aren't we, aren't, aren't we kind of like in Xanadu or something? I don't even know. The camera passed through several doors with inscribed labels. Please write down the sounds you heard as the video passed through the doors with the following inscriptions. Travel. Let's listen for something. Maybe a diesel engine idling? Question. Nourishment. A sort of... Wait. No, someone, someone hammering on wood I just heard. Sleep. Very quiet. Well, I heard music at some point. Weaver's video showed up again right before the flood. Actually, I think it might have been the last thing we ever broadcast. So... First, that's really damn creepy. Secondly, they said it went on for years. And the last time it showed up, so right before the flood. So Weaver tried to warn them for years about the flood. Whatever the flood is. Wonder how Weaver knew about it and where they were broadcasting that message from. Okay, location updating effect on emotional memory. Subject is confused but not sleepy, probably just came in a little disoriented. Of course, melancholy while recalling grief was not yet adjusted for time of day or weather, or it'll need to be thrown out. Uh, so it'll need to be thrown out. Just record this whole set as is with a note like, produced the standard effect on the introspection index. Damn, this is taking a while. Daryl will be heartbroken if this is the only box we get through today. Ah, oh, the poor thing. He's like a paper butterfly. I would say a moth. Oh, look. Can you read the date? Uh... I can't read it either. It may not have even been current. I remember for a while we had a calendar up that was like years behind. I think Daryl liked the picture. What was it? Best friends. Every month there was a different pair of animals that were friends. <laughs> That's adorable. I think I'm going to be sick. You don't remember that? That weird intern brought it in from home. Uh, what was his name? Who? Oh, you remember, he was always, like... I mean, we'd make fun of him for... Damn, he's almost completely gone from my brain. So many interns coming and going, then. I guess I didn't bother even remembering their names. I wonder who was working back when this was recorded. Is there a tape of the monitoring room? Yeah, here it is. Oh, before we check that out, did she flip the calendar forwards or backwards? Uh, backward. Oh, weird. They usually flip it forward. Get 
you get? Ezra. <laughs> there she goes. Wait, do you think... Did she follow them out? Oh, oh, did she join the other cat and everybody else on board the boat? Is that what happened to them? Oh. Well, here's the last extended monitoring tape from the dock when they left. Oh, I hope this would happen to them. New cat friend. Uh... See, told you he was one of these, one of those distillery guys. Uh oh. Uh, time's up. I guess you were right. These other guys came to pick him up for work, maybe. I don't like how they all hang out together. It's creepy. We hang out together and work together. Yeah, but it's not. They're like, like more than coworkers. I don't know. I just get this awful feeling whenever I see them. Like, I knew them once, but not anymore. Like, when they make up a dead person to look like an old photograph of themselves. Sort of familiar, sort of strange. Yeah, exactly. There ought to be a word for that. Kitty cat. Oh, wait, where'd they go? Bye, kitty. <laughs> They look like nice enough people. I'm sure she's very happy with them. Yeah. So... It's been a bit of a memory trip for you, huh? But you didn't expect these old tapes to stir up so much. How does it feel for these people to come up again? Weaver Marquez and Wise Will... I mean, and... What was your boyfriend's name? The one who died in college? I know what it's gonna be. This feels like the punchline, or not like the punchline, but this feels like... This feels like the last word that ends this act. Like the climax. You hear the word and you're like, oh shit. You know that feeling? There should be a word for that. There probably is a word for that. Charlie. Yeah, it's kind of a bittersweet experience, actually. Like looking at photographs of people who have died or moved away. People that are gone. Wait, Charlie. Was that the person's name? It had to be, right? The person who slipped? Was it Charlie? I don't remember exactly. I want to, like, Google it just to make sure. But I'm not exactly sure how to. And I don't want to possibly spoil myself. So maybe I won't, but I'm, like, 99% sure that that is the person who... Uh, Conway had talked about. Gone, but not forgotten. No, not forgotten. You're right. I'm surprised it's not the end of the act. Okay, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. I just want to say, that segment was so good, my god. That was such a amazing mixture of, well, changing up the perspective again. So looking at stuff, you know, like you... I basically got to play as Shannon, sort of. But I got to hear the thoughts of the people watching the tape. It was really interesting. It's really interesting back and forth. Um, but also just this interesting mixture of really downright creepy, like... It's giving me the chills now. We're on the, the water, and now I'm just thinking about the flood at the station, and Weaver unable to, like, escape. Like, Weaver's trapped somewhere trying to warn people about the flood, and... It's just downright creepy. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon to float further down the river.